Welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna. If you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four. We are about to go into our sixth year of homeschooling. And here on this channel, we focus on secular curriculum choices. Today, I want to talk with you about secular science choices. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. Today, I'm gonna run through a little bit of like drinking out of a fire hose, the things that you guys were so kind enough to respond to my call on Instagram for secular science choices. As many of you know, we have done I swear we've done something different for science every single year that we have been homeschooling. And that's because up until this year, we just haven't found a great fit. Now, you guys know as secular homeschoolers, science is one of the biggest things. It's like a stickler. It's really hard to find um, because there's so much out there. There's so many homeschool publications, uh, so many homeschool publishers that are, um, religious leaning uh, that were born out of a need to censor the information that got to our kids. Like that's some people's motivation for homeschooling. So it is very hard to find things that check the box, especially where science is concerned for uh, being secular, for being a, a secular science curriculum. So I went ahead and I shared a post over on Instagram, which I'm going to do again with some other subjects. So at Making Everyday Magic over on Instagram. And I basically just put up a banner, Secular Science, and asked you to share the resources that you are using for secular science. Now, I have named all kinds of stuff on that post. There's so much stuff on that post. Be sure to go check it out. What I'm gonna do here is I'm basically, my goal is not even to lie to you and pretend like I know or have experience with half of these things because I don't. It's such a great list, which is really exciting. Um, but my goal is to talk with you about what I do know about and then to also here on YouTube compile a list of those things, right? So to have it all in one spot. If you have something else, write on down to the comments. Um, please let us know. Or if you have experience or you love it or you don't, write on down in the comments and let us know because I'm hoping that we can build this kind of resource. So I'm gonna talk about what I have used, but then I'm also gonna go in and just start like reading off of the post. Because again, my goal is not to give you all of the information that you could need. My goal is just to have a list in one spot so that you can do your own research and information. So let me start with, when we started homeschooling, you guys know that we used a, um, a distance-based program through Texas Tech ISD, and they used like a public school science uh, textbook. I honestly, I don't even remember the name of it to be honest with you. If I can think of it, or I'll try to find it, put it right here. Um, I don't even remember the name of it. Once we transitioned to Timber Doodle, it was uh, building blocks of science, which I didn't love at all. And that was our second grade year. It, it was not, I wouldn't even call it necessarily secular. Uh, you guys know, right? We are secular homeschoolers, but Timber Doodle it has non-religious curriculum kits. So it's not secular, it's like neutral. And that's the, the approach that that science program was. It was spiral based. After that, the next year, what we did is I used a few pieces, like I kind of made my own. So like some workbooks from Evan Moore, some scholastic like pocket folders, which I do have a video all about. I'll try to remember to link it right up here. Super fun, kind of doing our own thing, but I know I'm, I need an open and go. I'm not disciplined enough for that. I'm just not. I wish I was. I'm super not. After that, what we did this past year was Generation Genius, which you guys know, love, 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 love the approach of, love everything about it. But for some reason, I got it into my brain to go ahead and I have looked at this in the past, mystery science. I have looked at it in the past and for whatever reason, it just didn't hit like my sweet spot. It wasn't a thing. This time I looked at it again and then I was like, you know, okay. It checks the boxes for the reasons I love Generation Genius. And then I put it to the girls. Do you love this one? Do you want to try this one? And they've decided we're going to actually try. And my full plan, full disclosure, I lied to you. I told you we were doing Generation Genius another year, and we absolutely could. There's plenty of resources there to get another year, maybe even two years out of it. But they did express to me they do not plan to expand on the lessons they already offer because they've met those NTSA standards. And their, their goal is to be used not necessarily as a homeschool 
curriculum, but to keep on par to be used as a public school resource. So because of that, they're not planning to expand. And I don't know, the kids just really liked the look of Mystery Science. So we are just jumping ship with Generation Genius this year. We always have it in our back pocket to come back to. It's pretty affordable. I like it very much. $95 a year, video lessons, online quizzes, things like that. But we're going to Mystery Science. So Mystery Science has a few more things, um, so many more lessons, a similar approach. You can do little ones, big ones, sort of by grade, sort of by topic, sort of by, um, you know, different science disciplines, all kinds of things like that. The cost is less. I want to say it was like $75 a year and it has printable worksheets, like the whole nine yards, very similar to Generation Genius, but we're jumping into Mystery Science. So my bad, I lied, whoops. Love Generation Genius. Absolutely nothing against them. If you're planning with that, if you're going with that, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Mystery Science, very similar. We're just, we're just changing directions here. We are, we are veering off course and going with Mystery Science. I don't know how it happened, but it did happen. Again, nothing against Generation Genius. We, we quit using the Scholastic, kind of made my own program because that wasn't the best fit for us. We quit using Building Blocks of Science because I felt like there could be something better. This, we are literally, I don't even know why we're switching, but we're switching. Again, I, I know that there's an end in sight with Generation Genius and I maybe don't feel that same way with Mystery Science. So again, no shade to Generation Genius, love them. Still using their lessons right now just for fun, love them. But we are going to Mystery Science. I don't know, I don't know how it happened. So. This is already getting really lengthy. I need to stop talking. Okay, ready? Because I got to pull up this. Okay, because it's important to me that I actually share what you guys actually shared with me. And there are some good ones. So other things that we use, not as a curriculum, but at, not as a curriculum. Wow, that was a struggle. Um, other things that we use as a resource and not necessarily as a curriculum. You guys know we're doing Brain Pop this year. I like Brain Pop. I do very much. Um, here we go. There's so many comments because you guys are wonderful. Uh, knowledge Crates, I have a link for you right down below. I love them. It's like art, it's like STEM, it's like craft, it's like learning where they don't know they're learning. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, something else that we used this year, I haven't used our science, so Studies Weekly has like a science curriculum um, that like is the same kind of like newspaper-y style. I love Studies Weekly. Uh, so they have that. Uh, Pandia Press has, Science, real science odyssey, science odyssey, something like that. Real, real science odyssey from Pandia Press. I love their history. Love, love, love. I'm about to order our third history course for use for next year. We'll talk about that later. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally not excessive. It's fine. Um, so they have like a science curriculum. I think it's more like unit studies, but I might be lying. Uh, mystery science. Yeah. Yeah. Again, go over there because we have everything tagged right in there. Knowledge crates. I said that. Um, North Star and uh, Educational Explorations, North Star Homeschool. So awesome. They have units dirt. Guys, my kid will dig in dirt all day. And now we can check it off as science. Yes. Thank you very much. And science is one of those things that it's totally easy to not have a curriculum at all because like you just have to figure out what's going on and how things are working. And so science is pure and good and wonderful. And it is probably the easiest box to check as far as learning. You literally just have to want to learn and ask the questions and find the answers. And you can check that box with science. You don't need an official homeschool curriculum, but it is nice to have. Okay, so let's, okay, I gotta stop talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. Okay, here we go. The Amazon driver just pulled up. Let's see how crazy they think I am because I'm right in front of a big window. Okay. Real Science, Odyssey, Pandia Press, Studies Weekly, Knowledge Crates, North Star Homeschool, uh, Generation Genius. I do love them, guys. We're not choosing them, but I love them. Um, Beaker's Science. Okay, somebody wants to know if Bookshark Science has any, any recommendations for that. If you guys know about Bookshark Science, give us some love down below. And again, if you guys are using these, give me the pros, cons. I need to know. Pros, cons, costs, why you love it, why you're keeping it, why you're not. Building Foundations for Scientific Understanding. I think, is it Homeschool Happy Hour talks about this one? Somebody talks about this one, but I don't have any experience with it. Um, science mom, I heard really good things about this. And I think this might be like our middle school transitional science. Once we're past kind of elementary science. Um, let's see, oh, more science mom, science mom. Idle, wild, non-religious version. It's neutral, it says, and fantastic, okay. Elemental sciences, science chunks. That sounds fun. Um, Rock Ridge Press, Backyard Explorer books, okay? Blossom and Root, heard really good things about Blossom and Root, really, really good things about Blossom and Root, but I have not used anything for them personally. I'm a little turned off by having to like source the things. You guys know I'm an open and go kind of girl, but you know, 
I'm branching out of my homeschool styles a little bit, growing up, maturing a little. Um, let's see, Adventures with Teacher Ben. I don't know who that is. He sounds fun. Ooh, Dr. Binox on YouTube. So I didn't, I didn't put this down, but it's really good. Okay, there's the Amazon man, and he hasn't noticed yet. Let's see if he notices. Nope. Whoa. All right, STEM launcher. I don't know what that is. Oh, they're commenting themselves. Oh, good for you. Live and flex classes on our school. That's cool. Groovy lab in a box. Moving beyond the page. Again, more things I am not familiar with. Okay, so I'm trying to do like all comments and I don't know if that did it for me. Um, but these are just a few things to get your brain going, to get your stuff started. Oh, there was one more. Oh, Beaker. Beaker's Labs, I think it was, it's like a box for early elementary and there's Mel Science. Those are pretty cool. Um, I don't have any experience with those, but you guys know we love our knowledge greats. It's super awesome. Anyways, okay, so this is a lot of information um, and also no information on some of the ones I just literally read the name to you for, but I'm just hoping to get these resources in one spot so that you can do your own research because by all means, what does or doesn't work for me does not mean it will or won't work for you, but just knowing about it. Just being able to have one place where we have this vault of information is my goal. Now, we will have other ones coming up. I wanna do this for every subject, okay? So be sure to follow us over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic, and be sure to scroll down to the comments. Let us know your feedback. Do you have experience? Do you not? I need to know these things. Of course, you can always go search out some of the other secular mamas here on YouTube who are sharing what they're using and they're wonderful and they're happy and kind enough to share all the things that they are doing. So if you have anything to add to this list, please do not hesitate to interact with us. Again, guys, there's more people coming to homeschool now, even now, as the world is returning to normal, they decided their new normal is gonna be here hanging out with us as homeschoolers. So let's welcome them, let's love them, let's provide them with some resources. Guys, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, Scroll right on down to the comments down below. Uh, leave us some love over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. Hit the big red subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up. For those of you who stayed to the end, we actually recently just went to the uh, Six Flags Homeschool Day. I've got, I'm sharing it over on Suitcase Princess, so go, go like, subscribe, give me some love over there and check it out. But we went to their thing and they actually had two online um, books that you could fully print out. Let me see, one second. Check this out, look at this. How cool is that? So they had one workbook for six to eight and then they had a physics workbook for um, nine to 12, I think. But it's tangents, it's all kinds of things. Look, here's the table of contents. Guys, it was so cool. Again, science could be anywhere doing anything. Designing a ride, identifying systems, estimating and communicating pulse rates. One of the things was finding a probability of winning one of the carnival games. So cool, so amazing. Finding the heights of things using a height finder, which we made. And then I just want to show you what I thought was the coolest thing. Okay, so do you see this? We're in Texas and this tells you the boxes that it checks for both science and math, if applicable, in the state standards. And I thought that was the coolest thing. Anyways, so that, I just got really excited. Be sure to go check that out because well, I did lose all of my footage from it. It was super fun and super amazing and you should do stuff over there. And somebody, guys, somebody came up to me and they're like, oh, are you the, the homeschool mom from YouTube? And I was like, oh my gosh, I am the homeschool mom from YouTube. And it was the coolest conversation I've ever had. And they're new homeschoolers and they're doing well and I'm excited and I love that. And it made me feel so happy to know that I come here and share and somebody finds it valuable. So guys, Share those science resources, please. And then show up over on Instagram because we've got, we need history, we need language arts, we need grammar, we need vocabulary, spelling, math, everything over there, okay? So share the love. Let's pool our resources together and give people out there a jumping off point because if we can have a whole list here and they can figure out what is worth their time to, to go research and then what is just maybe not something and they wanna skip it, these are the things that people need to know. So let's give everybody a springboard, a jumping off point to make those decisions for the 2022, 2023 homeschool year, which is rapidly approaching.